let me tell you a little bit about these pictures that are up over my shoulder. When I have somebody new come into the dojo, the first class is usually a lot of explanation. So I like to explain who we bow in and bow out to. This man on the right is Morihei Ueshiba, also known as Osensei, which is like great teacher or professor. His father had taught him judo, and judo was through all the schools already because of Jigoto Kano, who was the minister of education. So he already knew judo, and he met a man in Hokkaido named Sokaku Takeda, who taught him the Daito Yu Jiu-Jitsu. From that, Morihei Ueshiba met another man named Onisaburo Deguchi, who influenced him very strongly religiously and spiritually. So Morihei started softening techniques and limiting the amount of techniques, which culminated with the development of Aikido. Now, for those who have looked closely at the Daito Yu Jiu Jitsu techniques, you can see many of these techniques that Osensei was teaching. You may not see those type of techniques in the main line of Aikido anymore, but in the Wama style, which was maintained by Morihito Saito Sensei, he was the closest student to Osensei, actually spent more time as an adult with O-sensei than Kishimaru Ueshiba, who was O-sensei's son. He worked on the railroad and was on a day-on, day-off routine. This allowed him to spend a lot of time with Morihei Ueshiba and get a lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction from him. And this was a time when O-sensei was developing the weapons curriculum, so Saito-sensei taught the weapons curriculum in Tokyo for a number of years. The man on the left is Nisho Sensei. He's from northern Japan, and he came to Tokyo during World War II as a young man, actually a teenager, about 15 or 16, and he got a job in the Yokohama Mint. He did judo in the schools as he was growing up. When he got to Tokyo, he got into karate and was studying karate for a number of years. And while the war was going on, a lot of the time he was the only one in the dojo. The windows are all blown out and everything else, so he'd practice and maybe swing a weapon around and then leave if there wasn't an instructor. About 1953, one of his senior instructors went to a demonstration of Aikido with Morihei Ueshiba. He came back to the dojo and he talked to Nisho sensei and told him, you've got to go meet this guy. He was like a ghost. I couldn't touch him. So Nisho sensei went to a demonstration and saw the same thing. He was so impressed he never went back to the karate. However, he did incorporate judo and karate into what he taught. Also, when he started, O-sensei and the senior senpai who were teaching, they would say this technique or that technique came from the weapon. When Nisho-sensei asked to be shown how that fit together, he couldn't get good answers. So, he decided to go to the masters of the weapons themselves. He learned the weapons to a high level and then started incorporating them back into the Aikido. His Aikido is very different from everybody else's. It's very flowing, very fast, and it doesn't give up any of the effectiveness. It's still fast and effective, but it's more complex. I start with three of my first teachers were direct students of Morihiro Saito, and they went to Japan to study with him. And one of them was Japanese. He was uh, the head Uchideshi at Iwama. And he came in April of the year that I started. So I started in January of 86. He came in April of 86. And he had also gone to Kanagawa University, which is in Yokohama, which is south of Tokyo. And there wasn't any Iwama style in that area. So he got in with Nisho Sensei. And Nisho Sensei was a close friend of Saito Sensei. If Nisho Sensei felt like he was running into a problem, he would go and see Saito Sensei because Saito Sensei made it his duty to teach exactly like O Sensei taught. And he taught inside of O-sensei's house, in the dojo that was a part of O-sensei's house. This building that you see across the street behind him, this, this is across the street from the Iwama dojo. This is the Aiki Shrine, which was built by O-sensei. Every year, 
to honor the death of Osensei, this is around the 26th or 28th of April, there's a big get-together and a demonstration by, it started out, it was Osensei's son, Kishomaru, who gave the demonstration. He's passed away, so now it's the grandson who gives the demonstration. This is a family business that's being passed on down through the family. At the time that I was in Japan, as far as the, the lineage goes, Kishimaru Ueshiba, the son, was Doshu. He was number one in Aikido in the world, and Saito Sensei was number two, and Nisho Sensei was number three, because a lot of the old pre-war students who were more senior had passed away. So those are the people that uh, we bow into and bow out at the end of class. Let me explain something about this bow in and bow out. It's not a religious ceremony that we're doing. It's a calling of their spirits to come and watch over our class. And then at the end of the class, it's releasing their spirits back to the universe. That's pretty much a normal bow in that goes with practically all of the martial arts that I know of in Japan. So it's nothing unusual. I'm not trying to drive religion on anybody.